The girl talks her back. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel if you've never been here before. My name is Emma Tamsin Hill. Thank you for joining me today. So, guys, we're back with the girl talks. It's been a very long time, but I really want to start bringing more girl talks back to the channel, doing more of the things that I feel like you guys really love and I really love doing as well. My good little advice videos. You guys know I can talk for England, so these girl talks, they're cute, and hopefully you guys like get some good advice from them. Today we are going to be talking all about how to deal with heartbreak, how to get over heartbreak, how to get over a relationship that you've been in. I feel like we've all been in this situation before and I get asked this question a lot like how do I just move on, deal with it, get over things and I feel like I'm going to try and touch on a lot of points today. Obviously things that just relate to me and what I've been through but I think we'll, we'll do another little video soon where you guys can ask questions but this is going to kind of be like my, my definitive guide to getting over heartbreak or getting over someone that you're no longer with. But before we get into all of that, we do have a video sponsor today. So big shout out to BBC iPlayer and BBC Sounds who are sponsoring this video. And I'm gonna tell you all about how I've been using BBC iPlayer and BBC Sounds recently. Recently, I've been watching High Confessions of an Ibiza Drug Mule and that docu-series, it's like a docu-series about a girl from Northern Ireland who goes to Ibiza and gets caught up in this drug trafficking ring and basically gets caught trafficking drugs from Peru back to Ibiza and gets put in prison in Peru. This is a real story that happened in the UK, like in the early 2010s. And the girl who it's actually about is on the documentary, like basically talking all about what had happened. It's kind of like a docu-series, like drama kind of thing. Cause like they have acting in it. Honestly, it has me on the edge of my seat. I'm like, what's gonna happen next? And obviously it's a true story. So it feel, I feel like it makes it more like exciting and riveting. So I've been loving that. I've also been loving Press, the podcast on BBC Sounds. They have so many different original podcasts on there. Listen to different mixes, like different radio stations. So I've been using both of them. I've been listening to the podcast in the morning when I wake up. I try to listen to a podcast in the morning and I've been listening to that in the mornings. It has so many different programs on there, so many different shows, so many good documentaries. I love a good documentary so they have so many documentaries on there that are just so good what I love about it is there's just such a different array of things so there's like documentaries dramas but then also like fun things like flat out fabulous which is like transforming flats like interior design programs they have things like the rap game which is like a competition of people who are like going to be like the next best thing in hip-hop and rap they also have pose on there which I am about to start and I am so excited if you guys have watched pose let me know it's basically about the 1980s ballroom culture and lgbtqia plus issues which we love to see so thank you so much to bbc for sponsoring this video like how crazy big big bbc sponsoring me but thank you very much i've been loving it and hopefully you guys can watch some good stuff on there let me know if you've watched anything good over there recently put it in the comments and we can all have a little talk about it let's just get straight on into the video i feel like i'm gonna give you some tips like some kind of pointers and we'll go into more depth on those things i'm excited let's get the girl talks going again i've come here with my brew i decided not to do it as like a little mukbang i know you guys like the mukbang so i'll try and bring them back but i just thought first one back we'll have a little sit down chat okay so i've got my little list right here of everything i want to talk about today so we're going to do in little bullet points hopefully i can figure out a way to like timeline it on the bottom so you can come back and watch certain parts later but yeah my first tip for you is to surround yourself with your friends and your family they are going to be your biggest support network in whatever you've been through whatever kind of situation it is whether it be really serious you were together for a long time surrounding yourself with friends and family is so important because they love you for you they're going to be there to support you to listen to you for a shoulder to cry on it's just so important to like be around people like that and i feel like that kind of brings you joy a lot of people when they've been in a relationship like they kind of lose some of their friendships if they get super consumed in the relationship reconnecting with those old friends is so important like i feel like any good friendship like it doesn't matter if you haven't spoken for a long time you can pick it back up and you can like you know fix it i know for me when i went through like a big breakup like having my friends around and like laughing with your friends like uncontrollably like it's so important and if you don't have many friends going out of your way to try and make some friends like going to like a new club or like there's always ways you can make friends online these days like there's bumble bff there's like people on instagram that you can start talking to having people there that help you build yourself up is so important and it's not like running away from your own feelings it's just like sometimes you do need to just 
have distractions when you've been through a situation like that and having your friends there and your family there is really really important number two this is a big one and this is to date yourself do all of the things that make you happy. Do all the things that you want someone else to do for you. If you want to go to the museum, go to the museum. Go to cinema, go to cinema. Go out for a nice drink, nice meal. Do that to yourself. Date yourself. You want to be so full of love for yourself that it doesn't matter if someone else won't show you that love to you. I also think like working to be the best version of yourself is something that's like super important. But obviously sometimes it can seem like a bit of a chore. Putting that love and effort into yourself is only going to make you thank yourself. So wherever that that might be like personally I like to do that little gratitude exercise and stuff like that so like the whole dating yourself thing and treating yourself with love like whether that be like a little pamper session or just doing things that you want to do like and dating yourself like you would date someone else is so 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 important also just focusing on yourself and prioritizing your own well-being your mental well-being your physical well-being everything like that prioritizing what makes you happy like I feel like there's so many birds outside. I feel like we can get so caught up, especially in a relationship, because there's a lot of compromise in a relationship. Like, when you've been in a situation like that, where you're not only thinking about yourself, you're thinking about the other person as well. Then when it goes back to you just having to think about yourself, you kind of, you don't know what to do. I'm a person that often prioritizes other people over myself, and sometimes it can lead me down a bad path because I end up having my cu cup half empty and I need it to be fuller. So sometimes you, it's not selfish to like put all your effort into yourself. Obviously, as long as you're being considerate to other people, but filling your own cup up first is so important. So prioritize yourself, date yourself, do all the things that you wanna do, treat yourself, because you're gonna thank yourself for it. It's those little moments of gratitude that really, really add up. Number three. This is also a big one. I'm very, very guilty of this. And it is, I'm just reading off my phone. Did you love them? Or did you love the idea of them that you created in your mind? Hmm. <laughs> you know, like in the beginning of the relationship when someone is like being the best version of themselves, you think, oh my God, this person is incredible. We are meant to be, this is my soulmate. Then you start seeing a little crack here, a little crack there, a little red flag here, a little red flag there. And you ignore them because you think, no, but that the person in the beginning, that's them. That's them. Sometimes it ain't them. Sometimes you need to focus on the actions you are receiving rather than the actions that you received in the past. I am so guilty of meeting someone and it going really well and then I start romanticizing and I start picturing, oh my God, we're gonna have a life together, we're gonna do this and we're gonna do that and they're this and they're that. Whole time I've made up a person that doesn't even exist in my head. That person isn't that person. You really have to go off face value on what people give you in that present moment. And I am a hopeless romantic. I always see the best in people. I wanna see the best in people. I want you to be everything that I dream of. You know what I mean? But sometimes it's just not realistic. Like this is the real world and that isn't the way it goes all the time, unfortunately. But just because someone maybe treats you disrespectfully or isn't what you kind of thought they would be, it doesn't mean you're any less of a person. Also a big thing is don't romanticize the past. It's so hard like when you break up with someone not to look through pictures, not to look through texts and videos and remember all the good times you had together. And that's good. I don't suggest to become bitter and regret everything that happened. But kind of remember, that's a moment encapsulated in time and I'm happy that happened for us. I'm happy I got to experience that. I'm happy I got to experience that love and they got to experience that love too. But that is in the past. We've broke up for a reason, whatever reason that might be. We've broke up for a reason and that reason is right in this present moment. We can't keep going back and romanticizing, oh, but this and but this and but that. I'm a very, very, very firm believer of if it is meant to happen, it will simply happen. My life, a path is already designed out for me. Not like, oh, I have to, I think this is gonna happen and this is gonna happen, but I just think whatever the universe permits for me is gonna happen. That's why I'm not worried about life because the right thing will always happen in the end. And what? who am I to like tempt fate and, and try and make this happen and that happen? If it's meant to be, it's meant to be. And it's as simple as that in my head. I know not everyone thinks like this, but personally, if you relate to that, you relate to that. Also going kind of into this point again, when someone shows you who they are, believe them. If someone is disrespecting you and acting in a way that you don't like and, you know, even worse than that, if it's a toxic relationship or an abusive relationship, 
If someone's showing you who they are right now, you have to trust and believe them. You can't think, oh, but like two months ago, they did this for me and they did that for me. Okay, but that was them two months ago. We change so much as people, like myself, like, me a year ago is not the same person who's sitting here right now like we're developing and changing so much as humans all the time and we go through so many experiences that shape our lives so I think the person who they are today you have to trust that that's them because that's what you're living with right now that's the version of themselves that they are giving to you and you can't think oh but they used to be like this and then maybe they'll be like that again <sighs> when someone shows you who you are you have to believe them in every aspect of your life. And that doesn't mean they're a bad person. That just means I'm not willing to put up with this. There's things that you are and you aren't willing to put up with. And if the, if it's, obviously if it's something that you can't put up with to the point of when you're broken up, you have to trust yourself and believe your gut instinct and your intuition. I don't even remember what point we're on now. I think this is number five. I'm not sure. But the next point is reflect on yourself. Think to yourself, what do I really want in a relationship? What are my non-negotiables in a relationship? What am I looking for in a partner? What am I looking for in my general life? I think a lot of people have the tendency to get in relationships that are just easy. It's kind of like, I used to be like this when I was younger. It's like, oh, I meet you, you like me, I like you, we'll be together. But sometimes it's really not that simple. You know the saying like, sometimes love isn't enough? That is, there's no truer saying than that. Sometimes love just isn't enough. Sometimes you don't mesh as people. Your lives don't mesh. Your way of going in life doesn't mesh. And you guys being together, it isn't gonna work. For some people it does work. And some people are willing to put up with certain things and some people aren't willing to put up with other things. I think what's really important is building a strong foundation of what do I want in a partner? What do I want? Like Because at the end of the day, like if you can't see yourself being with them in the future and building a life together, I don't see much point in the relationship, but that's me personally. I know other people are willing to get in relationships that are a bit more for the now, and that's completely fine. I think for me, I'm very much a person of, I know I keep saying for me, but I'm just trying to relate back to myself so I can give you this point of view, but being with someone in a relationship has to be better than being on my own. And being on my own is pretty fucking good. So I think like I've built myself up, up so strong that like being alone, I can do everything for myself. I provide for myself, I'm independent, I can do everything alone. That's not saying oh, I don't want I don't want a boyfriend, I don't want a girlfriend. But I just mean like being with someone has to be better than being alone. For me, my negotiation to get in a relationship is they have to, you know, bring out the best version of myself. I want to feel my best self when I'm with them because they bring that out of me naturally. Or they make me want to be a better person because that they're so good for me. That's like the kind of reasons why I would want to get in a relationship with someone. At the end of the day, all these like futile things like how people look, how much money people have, what kind of job people have, how tall people are, it doesn't mean anything. The biggest quantifier for me in a relationship is, do they make you happy? If they make you happy, then that's great. If they don't make you happy, you shouldn't be with someone. So sitting down and writing a list of like, what would my dream partner act like? And look, listen, no one is perfect. No one has absolutely everything going for them. People have things that, you know, might annoy you and you might have things that annoy your partner. But when you love someone so much, it doesn't matter because those things that are maybe the less, the more bad, I don't really think anyone has bad parts of themselves, just things that other people might not agree with or align with. Those parts that you don't align with that person, when you love them and it's true love and it's everything is right, it doesn't matter because you accept them 100% as themselves. So I think it's worth thinking, what do I actually want in a partner? What are my non-negotiables? What are my things that I'm looking for? And you know, when you're dating, being a little bit more like, okay, like not picky, but I just mean like, if someone's showing you red flags or things that don't align with you, kind of being like, okay, this isn't gonna work. So yeah, does that make sense? I feel like I went on such a tangent then. But sometimes you can think someone was literally the best thing since sliced bread and then a couple years down the line or a couple months down the line, you think, no, that, hap that ended for the, the right reasons. I'm happy it ended, we weren't right for each other. But that doesn't mean you have to hate a person just because you're not together anymore. It just means we shared this time together and it was nice while it was nice, but you know, it wasn't, it didn't turn out for the best and we don't have to hate each other. It's just life, life is like that. 
So, number six, be patient with yourself. Your feelings don't change overnight. So you having these, being heartbroken and feeling sad and upset, that is completely valid. Let it out. The biggest thing that I have learned in like the past couple of years is don't suppress your emotions because they will just eat at you inside. Honestly, I used to feel so much shame around like being sad or being angry about certain things. But once you just accept it and let it happen, let yourself have a bad day. Some days are shit. But once you let it happen, I often find you recover from that in a more timely manner. You don't hold on to it for as long. Once you accept, okay, I am sad today and that's okay and I'm gonna be sad for a few days, then you you will just naturally start to feel better because it's like, okay, I've allowed myself to feel those feelings. So don't suppress it. Let yourself cry, let yourself journal it out, let yourself be angry, let yourself feel all the feelings. And honestly, over time, I say this constantly and it's so cliche, but things are cliche because they're true, but time is the biggest healer. It honestly is. As time goes on, things become more clear. You can look back on a situation with more wisdom and things just make more sense. Okay, the next step, it could be a little bit controversial, but this is just my opinion, but obviously, my opinion is not the only opinion. Everyone has opinions and that's okay, but allow yourself to feel the feelings and process what you're going through without rebounding and going straight back into dating. Um, you know, like, oh, you have to get under someone to get over someone. It doesn't work. We all know this. It might feel good in the moment. And look, I think everyone has broken up with someone or ended a situation and gone out on a night out and got with someone or started texting someone or started texting a different ex. It's natural, but in the long run, it doesn't make you feel any better. You're not dealing with the emotions that you're feeling. You're just kind of putting a blanket over the top of them and hoping they go away. They don't go away. So over time, coping with those emotions, dealing with it, dissecting it, thinking, okay, I'm coming to peace with it, coming to peace with yourself, coming to peace with the situation is always gonna be more beneficial than jumping straight into another relationship because you're just gonna bring all the baggage that you had from that relationship, all the things you haven't dealt with, straight into another relationship with someone else that had nothing to do with that. So I personally think healing yourself, going through those emotions yourself, and you know, making a fresh slate is for the best. Cut off all communication for now. It might seem harsh. I am that kind of person that like I never want to block people, but you can't get over someone if you're constantly reminded of them. If you're constantly seeing their Instagram pictures, they're seeing their stories, seeing their whatever it might be. You can't get over someone whilst they're very actively still in your life or you're still texting. And I mean, I'm pretty sure everyone after they break up, you still have some sort of communication and stuff, but it's better for you in the long run to kind of cut that off and say, you know what, it's honestly nothing against you. I would love to be friends one day, but I can't get over you whilst we are still very much in each other's lives. It makes it complicated because those feelings that you had for each other, they don't disappear overnight, they're still there. So it's, it's extremely difficult to get over someone whilst, you know, you still have to see them all the time or, you know, see their Instagram or whatever. Say you go to school together or go to class together or work together. It's going to be difficult, but I think the best thing you can kind of do is cut that communication just for yourself and who knows maybe down the line when you both dealt with it in time you can be friends and that'll be great another thing i will also say is avoid social media stalking stop going on their profile checking what girls they follow checking to see if he's like their pictures check and see what tweets they're liking what they're retweeting who they're following don't do that you are literally bringing heartbreak and bringing torment into your own life and look i'm not sat here all right just like i am i never do that of course i've done that Everyone does that, but try your hardest not to because you're only bringing the negative energy and the bad vibes to yourself. You're hurting yourself. You're going out of your way to find something that will hurt you. And I think a lot of the time in life, ignorance is bliss. Ignorance is really bliss. When you don't know, you can't be hurt by it. Hmm. That's a big one because what I know what us girls are, we're guilty of stalking the social medias but you're only making yourself upset babe and you don't need that in your life you need to focus on being the best version of you and okay that situation's done let's move on the next thing which i think will happen down the line this does not happen in quickly after you've broken up but forgive them forgive them for the things that have happened forgive yourself for the things that have happened make peace with the situation that has happened and you know if it's been a really difficult one it won't be easy to forgive them or to make peace with the situation straight away it takes a very long time for that to come but once you've made peace with it and internally forgiven them you don't even have to say look i forgive you if you've made peace with it inside of yourself 
that is what's most important and forgiveness ultimately is the thing saying look i don't forget what's happened i won't forget it but you know what for myself i will give myself forgiveness i think forgiveness is more so a thing not only for them but it's for you like you're forgiving them you're not holding on to any hateful feelings or hatred in your heart anymore you accept look maybe things are unfair maybe they cheated on you maybe they did you dirty but in my heart, I can forgive you and I can move on. And that doesn't mean I want you back, but that means in myself, I've come to terms with it and I can move past it. I think there's honestly great maturity in that. And people always talk about closure, like, oh, I need closure, I need closure. You speaking to your ex-partner doesn't offer you closure. Maybe you can get a bit of clarity on certain things that might have happened. And I think that's good to have a conversation like that, but they can't offer you closure. The only person that can offer you closure is yourself. You're the one that says, okay, you know what? this situation, let's close a chapter of it, it's done. They can't do that for you. Usually if you talk to someone for closure, it's like they're gonna try and justify things and maybe worm their way back in and you might get back together and who knows and if it wasn't right and this, that and the other. Sometimes you just need to accept we're not, it's not gonna work and I can close the chapter and I can give myself that closure that I want. I'm the only one that can give me closure. That's a big, big, big one. Okay, and the last point I've got written down here is trust that your person will come at the right time. There's no point worrying, will I ever find someone? Will I ever be with anyone? Because listen guys, there are things worse in life than being alone. There are things far, far, far worse than being alone. We don't have to be attached at the hip to someone. We are our own people. There is a great purpose for your life, for my life, for everyone's lives. You don't have to be attached at the hip to someone in a relationship with people all the time for your life to have meaning and have purpose. You're the one that gives your life purpose. Obviously people can enhance your life and that is amazing and having human connection is so important, but it's not the be all and end all to have a partner all the time. Like I told you guys, I'm a great um, believer in like fate and things are gonna happen at the right time, everything happens for a reason. Yeah, I'm a great believer in fate. So I just think everything's gonna work out when that person comes. That means if they ever come, honestly, there are things, like I said, there's things worse in life than like people think, oh, I'm being alone forever. And it's like, sometimes that's okay. Like we don't have to do like the whole societal thing of like, oh, you meet someone, you get married, you have children, you, have, you live together, you do this. Sometimes it's not that, and that is like not the biggest failure in life. Like that person is gonna come at the right time for you and you never have to settle and you always have to stay true to yourself and do what you think is best for you. I really hope this video helped. I feel like I, I dropped a few little mm, gems of wisdom. These are just my points of view. Of course, my point of view is not the only point of view. If you disagree, if you think a different way, that is cool. Humans are all different, we're all so unique, and the way we think is also unique, but I just wanna say, whatever you do and whatever you think is right, make sure it's the thing that makes you happy and brings you joy and brings you clarity. You never wanna feel confused about people in your lives and if they're doing the right things for you or not. So I really hope this video helped. Um, I will be back with more girl talks. Honestly, I'm picking them back up. I'm excited. So I hope you all enjoyed this, guys. Let me know down below your own stories, if any of my advice helped, and I will see you soon with a very new video. Okay, also, don't forget to check out BBC iPlayer and BBC Sounds. Mm, 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 mm. I'll see you guys very soon with a new video. Love you guys.